Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are back on the update's new power dev server, at least the first one. And this is having a look at the new aviation vehicles which are coming to the game in the update. The first one is for Germany and it is the P47D16RE. This is a Razorback P47 and it's coming in as a 4.3 premium. I'm pretty sure this is coming in to replace the P47D, this one right here, because at least the P47 that the Germans used in World War II was a Razorback is about p47 um, so it has all the same characteristics you know access to no secondary weapons and pretty much the same performance but it does have a different cockpit on it so that is something to uh, look at it also may be worth looking at the news just to make sure uh, if they're going to remove the other German P-47 in favor of this one. That might be a bit of an issue, uh, which happens with this machine. So just be just be on the lookout for stuff like that. Then we have the BF-110 G4. This is a night fighter version of the BF-110. It does get access to a pretty cool radar um, on it, and it's very similar to what you find on the Do-217 uh, night fighters, at least in the game. It does get a really interesting armor profile as well, uh, very well modeled, and does have access to three crew members you've got a gunner then you've got the pilot and of course the gunner here now you may ask why is there a gunner there well this machine has shrug music uh, right at the back exactly where this uh, tail gunner is so it has two 20 millimeter mg 151s which are able to aim upwards and then it also has some extra guns on the front the modifications for this machine mean that you can bring a bunch of stuff so you can see you can bring some new cannons uh, you you have to bring one of these modifications so you have to pick one so let's say you bring like i don't know the uh, rockets and the um, rockets and the guns so you can see that you bring the shrug music the extra guns on the bottom the 20 millimeters and also you have access to the rockets on the wings as well but if you pick something such as the bombs then what it removes is it removes the guns at the bottom but it also keeps the shrug music so you're stuck with two 30 millimeters mk 108s so the low velocity mk 108s you have the 220s at the back as well and then you still have the extra 20 millimeters here um, in the base so even if you decide to bring bombs let's say for ground forces you still have a ton of weaponry on the machine as well this thing attacks to so much ammo it is completely ridiculous it will be able to stay in the fight for an incredibly long time also gets access to a turret with 2792 millimeters which is really nice the engines that you find on this machine are db 605 b's so a lot of power going through these engines and after having a very very fun time when it comes to the bf 110s that they added um pretty recently such as the g2 and the and the uh, F2, I'm really looking forward to this one with the extra radar. The next vehicle that is on offer for the Soviets is the MiG-21 BIS. The MiG-21 BIS comes into the game as a straight upgrade over the predecessor, the SMT. It does pretty much everything better. Uh, so it has extra hard points, it has uh, big old engine power, it has better maneuverability, has pretty much everything when it comes to the machine. It has access to the Tumansky R25-300 with 4,040 kgf with an afterburner thrust of 7 to 12. 20, which is pretty nice has access to two 23 millimeter gsh 23ls which are based here and then also everything else is just straight fuel on it has of course the pilot in the front which is nice and as i said it has six hard points so you can mount up to six missiles on it those missiles also vary slightly from the smts we have the addition of the r13m air-to-air missile which isn't as good as the r60 but it does mean you get way more options if you want to see the r13m it's a rear aspect ir guided missile nine kilometer range 
15 G's of maximum overload. And if you want to compare that to the R60, then what you have is 8 kilometer range, 30 G overload, and once again, IR guided. So those are basically the difference. It has a slightly longer range than the R60, but also has way less G tolerance on the missile itself. So I still think the R60s are the way to go. It does mean you have an extra option instead of having to use the uh, not exactly great missiles straight away um, but you can use all different types of them so you can see you can bring six r60s you can bring four r3s's or a bunch of r3s's and r60s r3r's and r13m's so you can pretty much bring whatever you want on this machine when it comes to ground pounding you still have the s24s you still have the s5k's so that hasn't really changed it still has the ballistic computer and all of that good stuff on the machine but overall this one is looking like a very very nice machine to play no countermeasures though no flares no anything like that instead everything else is improved apart from that little thing the next one is britain now britain is getting itself a harrier it's actually getting two, but only one is available on the dev server, and this is the GR1. It's a rank 5, battle rating 9.7 vehicle with access to Aidens. The 30mm, it gets two of them with 400 rounds of ammunition. Also gets access to some pretty cool secondary loadouts. Now remember, when it comes to this machine, it's a premium, so you get everything fully off. Uh, the missiles that you get are SRAMs, which are incredibly good, um, especially at the level that it's going to find itself at. Then you've got access to thousand pound bombs uh, you also have 500s and snebs as well so this machine is really going to be able to be very useful in pretty much any game mode where you find it um, which is really good it also has access to the VTOL capabilities so I'll just show that off for you right now just to show you uh, just to show you how how it looks in general it's a pretty cool little system uh, when it comes to it so you can see like the engines there so all you have to do is you set your thrust vector control and uh, you're able to do that. And then let's say we put it at 100. Let's just put our thrust up to 100 or, uh, you know, WEP and off we go. So we're in the air now. We can just uh, put it down a little bit so we can go into like hover mode. And then all you have to do, if you want to go, you WEP and then you put it straight and then you go straight down because you haven't made any energy. <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to tease it going forward. That was the thing that I first of all did. Uh, so I just want to show you guys because <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, you got to get used to this. But yeah, so you just take off straight and then uh, what you do is you tease it. So you get enough uh, IAS and then you just tease it forward. So let's say 80% and then 70% and then eventually you get it to about 50 or 45 and then it will start you know going forward at a decent rate then you can set it at 42 it gets to decent speed and then it clips in to where it's supposed to be and then you're able to set off so yeah it's pretty pretty interesting how the machine works and then what you can do is you can go back to what it was before so you can set it like that let's just deploy the air brakes you can slowly, slowly go back to the uh, hover mode idea. Which is pretty awesome as well. So, yeah. Um, the machine itself, uh, at least when it comes to the, uh, the VTOL stuff, is pretty nice. Let's just make sure to increase it so we don't hit the ground. There you go. And yeah, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? If you ever decide to use the VTOL. There's of course all the snebs and the wonderful rockets that they show. So yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to demonstrate that more when it comes to the, uh, when we have a look at the Harrier itself. But yeah, uh, the Harrier is in game now, which is really good. It has the Rolls-Royce Pegasus Mark 101, 8,620 kgf, and the rest of it is of course made of fuel. It doesn't have any armor on it, I'm sure that will be modeled in at a later date, uh, but at least the VTOL works and works in an interesting way. No radar, no um, RWR or anything 
anything like that just s rams which of course if you are familiar with them with the hunter should be pretty fun and then also bombs and rockets which is cool so when it comes to japan the japan get access to the f1 uh, now when it comes to the f1 the major difference between it and the T2 is it gets access to new missiles and also gets access to extra hard points. So the T2 um, only gets access to a very limited amount of missiles, two AIM-9Es at the most, but with the F1 it gets access to four. So it gets four AIM-9s and also a slight upgrade on the missiles. So instead of AIM-9Es as its best missile, it actually gets AIM-9Ps, uh, so a direct upgrade over the T2 um, compared to what we have before. So the AIM-9Ps, they have 20G overload, 18 kilometer launch range, range and they're also IR guided. The AIM-9Es uh, are 18 and 10 Gs so technically these ones can pull twice as hard as the ones that we have. When it comes to the cannon it's exactly the same, uh, the 20 millimeter um, which it has in the front and it also loses of course the extra cockpits. It only has one cockpit on this machine so it's probably a little bit lighter so its acceleration is probably slightly better but it's very hard to tell um, at least uh, for me. So yeah, uh, just a direct upgrade over the T2 should be pretty fun. China. China gets the Q5AB, another Q5 uh, in business. And then when we have a look at it, a little bit of armor on the uh, turrets and also gets access to some cool engines, the Shenyang Liming WP6s with a decent amount of afterburning thrust, a bunch of fuel in the back as well. It also gets access to an RWR, which is nice, and also the HF-14 unguided missiles. Oh, sorry, ro rockets. Um, when you look at the uh, secondary armaments though, it's still a bit rough, isn't it? You know, it gets access to some Type 130s, Type 90s. They do pen a lot, but you only get 14 of them overall. And then you get access to some bombs as well. So for me, yeah, the Q5AB is very similar to the Q5, still lacking a decent amount of ordnance, but at least it gets a pretty cool skin on it. Um, and also has those terrible uh, 23 millimeters, the Type 23s, which are the same as the ones on stuff like the MiG-9. So yeah, a little bit rough, um, but overall it is a beautiful plane, uh, so that should at least be a little tick in the book. Nice to see it as well. Um, Italy it gets access to the FC-20 BIS. The FC-20 BIS is a very weird vehicle. Um, it is a twin engine vehicle, uh, looks like a mini bomber, but isn't, and gets access to a turret on the back, a 12.7 millimeter, um, which will hopefully try and keep it alive uh, when uh, planes are behind it. It also gets access to two 12.7 millimeter offensive armaments and also a 37 millimeter. Now, the 37 millimeter right now is not on the x ray, but the two 12.7s are either side. You can see the 37 though um it's kind of hard to miss it's right here <laughs> right in the center uh, so yeah it's one of those wonderful things the vehicle for being a twin engine is actually quite maneuverable it's also sat at 2.3 has access to a 729 horsepower engine uh, the piaggio p11 uh, which is really nice and unfortunately the back gunner here um, has had a rough time but the one thing to say about this 37 uh, actually first of all when we look at the modifications you get the standard 12.7 millimeter belts for the Italians uh, but the 37 only has HEF HEF so this isn't going to be a tank killer um, this is going to be a plane killer three millimeters of pen across the board does get access to some bombs, some 50s, some 100s, and some 160 kilo bombs, so nothing to really write home about, unfortunately. The only interesting thing for me when it comes to the armament of this vehicle is the 37 actually fires quite rapidly and doesn't seem to actually um, overheat at all. So you can see here, like the, the actual general fire rate of this thing is pretty nice. And also, as you can see, it just isn't overheating. So you can fire this in decent succession. Uh, unfortunately, this thing doesn't have its cockpit yet. Um, but you can fire the whole set of rounds without it overheating right now, which is really nice. So yeah, uh, it's going to be quite a fun little plane. 
um, attacker, probably a bomber attacker. So yeah, it's it's all right. <laughs> it's uh, it should be a little bit of fun, which I'm looking forward to. Always nice to grind out some uh, Second World War vehicles. And the next one is another P-47. This is for the French. It's the D-22RE. So it's once again another Razorback. Uh, but this one is much more like the American one, where it has secondary weapons. It has access to two 1000s, one 500, or two 1000s, and then one 500 by itself. Um, doesn't get access to rockets, but it does get access to the really nice APIT belts when it comes to the P-47s. And then the customization, you can see the beautiful skin that this has, really, really lovely work done. And also you have all of this as well. The P47 D22 RE, um, I think is going to be a pickup for me personally, just because it will be very useful in air realistic and also ground realistic, which is, you know, one of the big things for it. And if you have a look at the tracers, you can see the new gun effects there. They look really nice. And then the traces themselves. You can see the little smoke effect. Isn't that cool? Beautiful stuff. But yeah, uh, so that's another uh, P47 Premium for the uh, French. And it is going to be rank 3. Then, last but not least, we have the SK-60B. The SK-60B coming into the game at 7.3 rank 7. This is a very interesting machine because of what it has on it. So it has no armor protection, does have a pilot, and also my guess is a co-pilot. The engines themselves, the Turbo Mecha RM9B 760kgf. And the main thing about this is its weapon loadouts. So it gets access to a bunch of different rockets, the M56Ds with 500 millimeters a pen than the m4956 is which are just 12 kilo massive rockets that are designed to just put big old holes in whatever they find and then it has access to agms uh, in the form of rb 5 as and these things pen 95 they're absolutely huge but i think there is a bit of a problem with the one on the uh one on the right i'll just test it real quick it also gets access to two gun pods with 30 millimeters so grinding this plane out actually won't be that hard to do um, because of that fact i'm actually looking forward to it because of that this does have a very fully modeled cockpit right now so you can test it on the dev server um, even you know a cockpit that moves as you can see then we've obviously got the other pilots it's got a little uh, little thing there isn't that pretty nice nice to see um doesn't have access to radar or anything like that just has access to pretty much the weapons that you bring along and you can see the beautiful clouds in the background, by the way, and the nuclear sun <laughs> that's present right now. Um, but this should be a pretty fun little, um, pretty fun little uh, maneuverable jet, which has a hell of a punch with these AGMs. Uh, the AGMs themselves, because this is a vehicle um, at 7.3, will face a lot of World War II vehicles. So good luck with that. Yeah, you see how high it fires there? It's kind of weird how why that one does that. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's a little problem with the AGMs right now, um, but I'm sure that'll be fixed before launch. And the fact that you can guarantee two kills with the AGMs, which have an eight kilometer range, is pretty nice on the machine itself. Um, looking at the 30s, uh, the 30 millimeter cannons right here, they have access to 300, um, 300 rounds of ammo. And you can see them there in all of their glory. So, yeah, the, these things are going to be a lot of fun. Um, they are uh, a cans, uh, so they will do a ton of damage. And you also have access to, of course, all of the great belts for it. So, yeah, this machine is looking great. A lot of the machines are looking great. And the P-47s are nice to see. It shows that eventually we'll get the proper German P-47 that is supposed to come. So overall, some nice vehicles, some interesting vehicles, some weird and wonderful stuff. Always lovely to see. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Trigger Hippie, Universe, Conte Baraka, Elove Goat, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Hans, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.